Hello, my name is Andrew Goetz. I'm a chief resident at Mayo Clinic. Today we'll be discussing a revision sphenoidotomy with a technique uh, known as a mucosal vomer rostrum flap. This is a particularly helpful flap for uh, recurrent sphenoid disease or sphenoid uh, fungus balls along with osteitis as it provides mucosal coverage during the healing process. The case we'll discuss today is a 25-year-old female with a history of chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyposis who's had revision sphenoidotomy in the office with continued uh, recurrence of scar. Therefore, we discussed a revision sphenoidotomy with mucosal flap coverage. Here you see a zero degree endoscope in the right nasal cavity. This is the prior sphenoid opening uh, demonstrated on the right side. Open maxillary antrosomy, as you can see, with scarring inferiorly along the sphenoid face as well as superiorly. So we started with uh, just revising some of the scar around uh, the opening in order to uh, better identify the pedicle of the posterior septal artery. And then we opened the sphenoid in a fairly typical fashion here with a straight mushroom punch, removing that previous scar, ensuring a wide sphenoidotomy. As we open this up, you can see the inspissated secretions and infection. Here's a superior incision. We essentially bring that straight anterior from the sphenoid opening, uh, approximately centimeter, centimeter and a half. Her, her middle turbinate had been resected in this case uh, in a previous surgery. Therefore, uh, that landmark's not available, but generally to the anterior edge of the middle turbinate should be sufficient. And then that incision is taken in a 90 degree angle inferiorly. The inferior incision, similar to a nasoceptal flap, is taken at the superior aspect of the coena and brought forward to connect to the other two incisions. And then this uh, somewhat limited nasoceptal flap is elevated in a similar fashion off the bone of the vomer, exposing the sphenoid face, keel of the rostrum of the sphenoid similar to a pituitary approach. We then perform a limited posterior septectomy and raise the contralateral flap off of the face of the sphenoid. This is the contralateral left side here. We're ablating the mucosa on the posterior septum. This is essentially the opposite side of the mucosal flap that we'll be raising in order to cover it the bony opening. So this mucosa is ablated and removed and then the sphenoidotomy is open widely on the contralateral side. Again we complete the posterior septectomy and create a common sphenoid cavity between the two sides to ensure good drainage postoperatively. Here we use a coenal atresia burr to drill down the sphenoid rostrum and the keel of the rostrum Oftentimes in these cases, this is quite osteotic, and therefore the drill can be a helpful instrument to ensure a wide opening. So this is taken between the two sphenoidotomies in order to ensure, again, a common cavity similar to a pituitary approach. Some continued drilling here down to this floor of the sphenoid. It's thought that this exposed bone is part of the issue with postoperative scarring, that the osteotic abnormal bone induces a more robust scarring reaction and that potentially is part of the issue with the postoperative healing. Therefore, this is the bone that we're attempting to cover with fresh non-disease mucosa from the septum in order to uh, aid with better healing and disease control. Now we've got a wider common cavity between the left and right sphenoids preserving the superior mucosa on the septum with the olfactory phyla and epithelium. Once that's accomplished, we rotate this flap into place, bringing the flap up superiorly and then across our sphenoid opening in order to provide good mucosal coverage again of that osteotic bone of the sphenoid rostrum that was drilled down. Once we're satisfied with that placement and coverage. 
we tend to place propel stents to help keep that in place as well as deliver mometasone and steroid to the area to ensure good healing postoperatively. So these drug looting stents are helpful both from a uh, position standpoint as well as delivery of steroid. It's important to not place these deep within the sphenoid and if there's a uh, exposed carotid uh, or optic nerve uh, one would exercise more caution in placing one of these stents uh, so important to note if there's any dehiscence. Key points for the sphenoidotomy with vomerostrum mucosal flap it's important to perform wide sphenoidotomies in order to ensure a good postoperative healing. You want to preserve the posterior septal artery pedicle similar to a nasal septal flap to make this a vascularized mucosal flap. Since you're cauterizing across that pedicle anteriorly, it's important to ensure good hemostasis to prevent postoperative epistaxis. And it's important to carefully place the drug looting stent and pay particular attention for any dehiscent carotid artery or optic nerve. And in those scenarios, I uh, would recommend against placing that drug looting stent. And that stent should sit just at the anterior aspect, the face of the sphenoid, in order to place the flap against the bone uh, during the healing process. That's all we have for the vomerostrum flap. Thank you for watching.